some parents think in Africa in particular, we think that by practicing soft love, we are practicing love. No, that's not love. I remember I was telling my sister yesterday when we were in the kitchen that growing up, I used to, my mom used to fry what we call in Cameroon acara beans. <laughs> I'm gonna put acara beans somewhere here. And my mom used to fry it and she used to make me pound the salt doors, the pot, you know, to make the fire, to pound the dust, you know, the dust from the, the wood. And then she would, when she's done frying, she would naturally put it in a transparent bucket and say, still, we go and sell this. Hey guys, hope you're doing very well. Welcome back to another episode on the Young and Independent Community channel. If you're new to me, my name is Sylvie. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. Listen, I came across a video right on LinkedIn and I had to share that video because I want to talk about that video in relation to, um, to Africa and the culture that we have back home. So in Africa, there's this culture whereby people think that they're still kids until the age of 25. <laughs> we think we're still kids and our parents actually take care of us for a very long time. But that's not the case with the people out here. Out here, people literally, um, at the age of 18, you're on your own, literally, you're on your own. You go and figure yourself out. And uh, that's a habit, that's a culture that I find is a, is a reason behind the development in the, in, in the Western world because young people become entrepreneurs very early on in life and for britain in particular a lot of people don't go to school they don't go to university a lot of them don't at the age of 18 they go into some type of apprenticeship and they start working look at this little boy i want you to watch this video and i want you to drop in the comment section what do you think this young boy is going to grow up to become Because I think that what this young boy is doing is very powerful. He is teaching us that there's no age actually to start a work ethic. Because in Africa, back home, when we are 18, 19, 20, we're still with our parents, we're unbothered, we go to university, our parents are still paying our fees. So we're like feeling, you know, entitled. We're in the title and we're feeling entitled. We feel like, no, things should be handed down to us. We should always have our way. You know, our parents, my father didn't do this for me. There are people even at the age of 30 who expect their parents in Africa to do things for them and they do that out of entitlement like not because okay he's my dad i'm struggling um dad can you please help me can you please support me just for the time being i'm gonna pay you back no they feel entitled they feel like you know it's their thing but look at this young boy going back and forth at some point even lifting two containers to help his parents what do you think is gonna happen when he grows up what do you think of his parents? Do you think what they're doing is child labor or do you think they're teaching their child how to grow up and become somebody who has a very powerful work ethic and someone who is eventually with that kind of work ethic, you're most likely going to be successful? Because this little boy, not only is he empathetic, he is sweet, he is kind, he is hardworking, he is determined, he is perseverant. Those are all the qualities just by watching this video these are the qualities i see in this young man and these qualities they don't fall from the sky guys parents have to teach their children this some parents think in africa in particular we think that by practicing soft love we are practicing love no that's not love i remember i was telling my sister yesterday when we were in the kitchen that growing up i used to my mom used to fry what we call in cameroon akara beans I'm gonna put that carabine somewhere here and my mom used to fry it and she used to make me pound the salt doors the pot you know to make the fire to pound the dust you know the dust from the, the wood and then she would when she's done frying she would naturally put it in a transparent bucket and say still we go and sell this and I remember my dad say hey don't do that to my children I've got money don't send my kids to sell in the street my dad was not happy with my mom but I'm so grateful that my mom taught me how to how to hustle at a young age. Even if there wasn't any immediate need for that. Because I remember telling my sister, she was like, was, was daddy broke? I was like, no, he wasn't broke. No. 
but I'm so grateful that mom did that because that's a story for another day and that's uh, I talk about that in another channel to get to freedom because mom that might have, might have had his money but mom she wanted to have her own money and she used to send us to sell this uh, Accra banana my, my, myself and my, and my cousin who was like my twin sister at the time uh, Belinda and I still remember those experiences and those experiences made me they shaped me but we want to protect our kids so much so that they become so you know a, a weak and so soft and so you know I'm not gonna do that like this new generation I'm not gonna do that no oh my I'm suffering no that's not pain what doesn't break you what doesn't kill you will make you stronger it's not about the destination it's about the journey what you learn and this young man is phenomenal God bless him, God bless his parents, and I hope that we can all learn from this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a comment in the comment section. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you enjoyed it, I want you to share it with a friend so that they can enjoy it with you. And don't forget to smash that like and notification bell so that when we upload our next video, you, my friend, shall be the first to know. Until next time, I want you to take care. Bye-bye.